All right, I think we are recording. There was no announcement on my side, but I, I suppose uh, it is recording. If not, then hey, you know, uh, just pay attention to what we are saying here. All right, so this is our main, um, this is our main uh, class portal here. I'm pretty sure everyone has uh, was able to uh, to navigate to that. I'm just going to just in case. I'm just going to make myself look like a student. View as a student here. And here is our FOL, um, the main screen. Uh, these are my courses that I'm teaching here this semester. Uh, yours is going to look a little bit different um, because uh, uh, it's going to show the uh, courses that you're learning or studying, okay? Uh, so this is our course right here. I put a little uh, multimeter with test leads uh, showing. So I'm going to click on that. And right off the bat, I'm going to navigate right to the content here. Okay. I'm going to click on the content. And first, here's the co uh, course outline. Click on that. If you click to this, if you look at the second one, and I'm just going to zoom in on the screen. Can I do that? Yes, I can. And this is our course plan. Now, what's here is the last year. So it's pretty much similar to what we're going Well, Sometimes I have to change things a little bit because uh, the academic calendar, the holidays are in different days and stuff like that. Uh, so for the most part, it's going to look the same. However, I have uh, placed the updated version of that, which is going to be posted here uh, once uh, the administration approves uh, that. And I uh, don't see a reason of why not. Uh, so this is our course plan now. Uh, when you click on, when you click on the, let's say again, this is our class portal and you go with content. And you're going to see something like, well, you're not going to see the student items, uh, teacher's items, because uh, this is, uh, um, well, that's for me. Now you're going to see the student items. And I'm going to, that's why, that's because I don't appear as a student. Now I look like a student here. So again, content, and you're going to see the student items. And in the students items, I have to zoom out just a slightly bit here. In the student items, uh, there are different subfolders. The first one here, it says updated course plan, temporary folder. So that's where our course plan lives. Uh, and uh, here is the lectures. And already you have uh, available for download uh, these uh, for documents that we're going to uh, talk about. Okay. And also, um, there is a section that is labs, and this is lab uh, timetable. Uh, we're going to go over that. And here is lab number one. As we go along, this lab, lab two, three, four, five, they are going to populate here. Uh, so now uh, you are just about to do lab one in the next two weeks. Um, and that's the only thing that appears here. Uh, and there is also, I'm going to close that here. There is also a section list. I can expand that and uh, we're going to go over some of that. Okay, so let's just uh, go over the course plan. I'm going to call it up here and zoom a little bit. You can download that, print it, or save it on your disk. Um, and this is our roadmap. Okay, so the course is Tools and Workplace Techniques. I'm just going to put my picture here so you can see things. Uh, all right, and uh, here's the uh, admin jargon right there. It's a 14 weeks uh, course. You're going to have another course with me um, 
during the second term and it's going it's called network cabling so in this course we are playing with electrical wires and devices uh, my job here is in this course is to get you ready for the next course which is called practical installations um i'm going to do my darnest and i will accomplish that i will make every single one of you comfortable with using the tools that you need to use and using the proper techniques of um, well by the time you're done you will be able to uh, terminate electrical wire or the duplex receptacle and you're going to get the sense of proper wiring and you will be comfortable with that so uh, whether you are um, coming from somewhere that you already have done some uh, some of that that's great or if you're completely green uh, just uh, walk off the street so to speak uh, you are also going to be okay because that's the point of this course is to get you ready and comfortable with uh, connecting wires and using the tools that you're going to be using and we're going to go over the tools as well all right so um, right here you can read that uh, uh, it's just a general description of things. Uh, what we have here is the labs. We're going to perform five labs. Uh, first one is NMD90, which is basically the first lab. It is, uh, we're just going to um, familiarize ourselves with a proper termination uh, technique uh, that has to do with the screw terminals. Pretty much almost all the labs involve a duplex receptacle screw terminal termination um, i can't stress that enough and by the time we're done with it you're going to see the reason for that all right so nmd90 we're just just going to terminate the uh, proper terminate uh, well, we're going to accomplish the proper termination on, on um, of the screw terminals for duplex receptacle then lab number two we're going to do the same thing but we are going to mount it onto uh, uh in a device box and the device box is uh well just in the device box uh, so we're going to use the box and termin uh, connector and uh, the, something that's called NMD90 cable, which we're going to over, go over what that is the next time we see each other. And uh, the other thing is going, we're going to perform the pigtails uh, joint and uh, the box offset. So this is the pigtails is the only one that is that, that doesn't involve the uh, termination that we are, uh, the duplex terminal, the duplex receptacle termination um using the screw terminals then there's the box offset we're going to mount the box on a um on a surface and it's going to be it will have to be on a certain height and we will uh, deal with some technical jargon that has to do with that and uh, also uh, we are going to uh, do a little uh, pipe bending Actually, no, box offset, the box, okay, back that up, device box termination. That's where we're going to mount the box on the wall. Then we're going to do the pigtails and then we're going to do the box offset, which is uh, 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 part of the conduit bending techniques. So we're going to get the pipe benders. Pipe bender is this term is probably going to be the only pipe bender and the hacks and the hacksaw is uh, the only tools that we're not asking you to bring. We're going to provide the hacksaws and we're going to provide the vise <laughs> to cut the, the conduit and we're going to provide you with the pipe bender. So we're going to go over that and uh, the last lab is we're going to connect something that's called a three-way switch and uh, we're going to test that for proper operation and I'm going to evaluate you on the uh, so-called, as I, as I call it, uh, um, wiring and termination hygiene. Uh, and uh, when we do the labs, uh, all the evaluation criteria will be posted in the rubrics. Plus, we're going to explain things uh, on what we actually expect. Uh, a little information, uh, just information here, midterm grading is going to be entered by October 21st. And the final grades for this course will be entered by December 20th, okay? The midterm grading uh, is basically, um, 
it's just like checking the pen temperature of the class. Um, you know, um, the mark for that, it means something and it doesn't. Uh, it's not affecting your final mark. Uh, however, if the mark, your midterm mark is a little bit too low, uh, then uh, we're going to let you know that, hey, you know, uh, you need to um, you need to pull up a little bit uh, and start working a little bit harder. Uh, um, and that's pretty much, uh, that's the reason for that. Uh, labs, as far as the course weight, uh, labs, all the labs, and in and this year, all the labs have to be, uh, here, all labs must be attended performed and evaluated with a passing grade. So there's two tier kind of uh, evaluation here, the labs and the theory part. So the labs, you have to absolutely attend all the labs and you have to do them. And the average of that have to, has to be a passing grade, which is a 50% minimum. And uh, the average evaluation of the two tests, two quizzes, that's what we have, and the assignment, which is the pretty much the academic part of it, um, if you can say that, uh, all that I'll combine. So the theory, you have to pass the theory and you have to pass the labs. There will not be a lab exam here and there will not be a final exam. We're going to have two tests, two quizzes, one assignment and the labs, all right? Uh, so here are the labs are worth 50% of the whole course. Uh, quiz one is worth 5%. Quiz two is worth 5% of the whole course. Assignment is worth 10%. Uh, you just, I'm just going to ask you to produce uh, three drawings. Uh, then uh, test one is worth 15% and test two is worth 50, 15%. So the practical part is worth 50% and the theory part is worth 50% of this whole course, 50-50, okay? All right, now uh, here is our roadmap to success. Here's the window to success, children. All right, uh, so uh, I have listed uh, everything by weeks and by dates. So if you look at week, you can just say, okay, what's, uh, what's today? Today is September 9th. All right, week one, September 5 to 9. So we are at week one. And you can just look at the date and you can tell which week of the whole term uh, you are in. Okay, and then uh, the, these are the topics of the theory that we're going to uh, go over. And let's say week five, it's a short week because uh, there is a study break. Uh, I think it's going to be, yes, it's going to be Thursday and Friday. So that's why we have to do the open lab right away. And the open lab, it means that uh, basically Anyone can join any section uh, and uh, do certain labs that uh, you were not able to do or catch up on things. Uh, we have to do that open lab uh, right uh, after we do lab one, uh, simply because uh, this is a short week and there's nothing else we can do with, uh, with that one. There's going to be another open lab, which is going to be the last week. So, uh, but uh, do not count on being able to, um, to do your work uh, during the last open lab because things are going to get a little bit hectic. Um, reserve that open lab for a true session that maybe for some true reason um, that you could absolutely do nothing else uh, that you have missed a lab or so okay so uh, reserve for that and that is going to work for you if you just decide that ah, i'm not going to join the lab but i can do it on the open lab you actually might get yourself in trouble because you might not be able to do that uh, simply because maybe you're going to have more than one lab to do or because some other things is going to happen, are going to happen and uh, whatnot. And maybe there are going to be other people who are um, uh, doing that. So I'm just going to be like this thing here for, for me, this, I'm, I'm torn all over the place, uh, helping, uh, helping people do the labs. Uh, all right. So, okay, enough said about that. And uh, you can go over this uh, on your own time. If you have any questions, uh, please, uh, uh, send me an email or talk to me during the lab. Okay, so that is, uh, that has to do with the uh, labs or the, the whole roadmap to things. Uh, what else do we have here? Students, uh, okay, so, uh, 
lectures labs sections list okay i have made a list of if, if you're not sure which section you are in uh, please uh, go to this document i'm just going to go again here this is our class portal go to content here then you go to student items uh, oh, my computer wants to update not now uh, and uh, you can go here to the sections list and find out which section you're in if you don't know already okay section one two three four, five, six, and these are all the names. So you can find your name just to find out which section you're in. Okay, let's go back to content again. Uh, there's something else I want to, um, I want to get uh, labs. Okay, if you go to labs, there's a subfolder right on top and it shows the lab timetable. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on the file here. These are our labs in the form of calendar. Again, this is a PDF file. You can just go here and download that. Okay, so you do that, you can download this document. And I'm just going to zoom a little bit. Can I do that? Yes. All right. So over here is some kind of logistic information here. Here's my name, here's Ms. Hashemi. Uh, absolutely must have class E hard hat. And I, as far as I remember, uh, somebody asked me if we need type one or type two hat. And I don't remember what I said, but just in case I said number two, we need we just need uh, type one hard hat is enough. Uh, the difference, main difference between type one and type type two of the hard hat is that uh, uh, type one protects you from objects falling from top, and type two hard hat uh, is also designed to protect you from objects that are swinging sideways, and usually those hard hats must be worn. Um, in heavy environment where there's chains swinging and things like that. But we, we don't need that. Type one is just fine, okay? And we're going to go over what hard hat is and so on. So as far as labs, I showed you where, how to find your section. So now here is in a calendar form. You find your section, let's say you are in section five, for example. Then this is the only column you're interested in. You're not paying attention to anything else. I also put some watermarks uh, as far as the dates. And I color coded the labs. So here is section with lab one. Of course, here's that uh, open lab that I mentioned before. Then there's lab two. Uh, it, then there's a little bit, uh, well, you don't it maybe it doesn't show as well but when you when you download it it's going to show better there's a difference between that little bluish shade and the greenish shade so here's lab two lab three and lab four and lab five we have five labs to accomplish and i also put little watermarks if you can see that or not uh, on this screen uh, that are telling you which week you're in okay so you find your section and you just go down that column to see when your lab is. So let's say section five, right here. You are doing your labs with Mrs. Hashemi, okay? And you're just going to go down, oh, here's a lab at four o'clock, four to six. What is the date? September 14, as easy as that. When is your next lab? You just keep going down on that. Oh, this is an open lab on Wednesday, September 28. Then you keep going down. Uh, oh, there's one. So here's four to six, lab two, and that is going to be on October 12th. If you're in section three, you're just going to be interested in this column only. So you're just going to go down, da, 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 where's my first lab? Oh, here's something. Okay, when is it? It's on September 22nd, and it is going to be from one till 3 p.m. and I'm going to do lab number one. So that's how we, uh, that's how we navigate. I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you. 
Okay. Any questions so far? Speak up or what is it? Forever something something. <laughs> Stay silent. <laughs> Where do I remember that one from? Uh, okay, can we go along? If nobody speaks, um, nobody chats. Oh, so why? So we only have lab five labs total. Yes, we're going to have five labs. Uh, uh, during this, um, this course is organized so the labs are you do the labs bi weekly. Why was it done that way? Um, well, it's not up to me. I'm just an executor of this uh, of the curriculum. I'm the only control I have all of the, over this course is how I present the material and um, in which way. Right? Will the hard hat uh, will the hard hat be provided to us? Um, <clears throat> The hard hat is part of the, no, it's not part of the kit, is it? You might want to find out. Um, but when you buy your kit, I think the hard hat is provided. So uh, once you go to the, to the bookstore, uh, you're going to have to buy it anyways, right? So is it part of the kit or you can just go to Home Depot and, uh, or Canadian Tire and, and, and buy one? Uh, it's up to you, okay? You need to have a hard hat. Um, all right. It's not part of the kit, but you can find them at the bookstore. Yeah, okay. Now uh, the bookstore is providing the, uh, yeah, usually the, the bookstore is ordering the red hard hats because it's, you know, school colors, <laughs> whatnot. Uh, also, there, uh, there is a certain color code as far as what color of your hard hat to wear when you are on site, depending on the job that you do. And uh, with my 30 years experience on different construction sites and different environments, I found that in some cases, uh, some people pay attention to that. Uh, and uh, The safety officer uh, on whatever construction site or an uh, industrial environment, they just care that your hard hat is there and it's on your head and it is intact. The color, uh, whatever right uh so our first lab isn't until september 22nd uh, we don't have thursday class until then yeah this is just the labs the theory part um they just give it to me online so we're just going to have to do the theory online this term uh theory you just come every week uh, part, you know partake of the theory classes but this schedule here is just for the this schedule here is just for the uh, labs now uh i want to bring your attention to this row right here what do we have to have when you come to the lab class e hard hat and we will go over in the next uh, session i mean that's the session the next presentation that right after this uh of uh, we're just going over the hard hat face mask uh, that's from last year so i added this word optional um it's up to you unless otherwise decided by uh, the authorities but right now we don't require mask green patch and orange patch orange patch safety footwear and people keep saying steel toes. However, what's available on the market, and I think this is probably the next best thing after the sliced bread, is instead of steel, is the carbon fiber. As long as you have the green patch and you have the orange patch, you're good. The carbon fiber uh, safety boots, uh, I like them a lot better simply because carbon fiber is much lighter than steel and if you are working on site eight hours in and out every day uh, your feet are going to thank you if you have lighter footwear on them okay. um, i bought mine about 10 years ago and they are still good and trust me, they worked. That carbon fiber that is on the bottom of the sole and front and the back, uh, once I stepped on a pretty nasty spike uh, that was in the form of a post because I was coming down from the ladder, I was climbing backwards. And by accident, I stepped on a spike. It's a fence post that, that was basically a spike. 
and it did not go through. It protected me from that, and that was the carbon fiber. Steel probably would do the same. Uh, so yeah, I spent a little bit more money on that, but uh, that my, that uh, those boots paid off. Uh, they worked the first week. I was I was wearing them. Okay. Uh, so it is important. Safety is important, not just because uh, we want to keep saying that. Uh, and of course, safety glasses. So you got to have a hard hat. Uh, safety boots and safety glasses. Also, please bring a padlock. Um, we need the padlock um, here. We need, you need your own padlock uh, because just around the corner and uh, I think when I was doing the tour uh, with Mr. Hagar, um, we showed you the lockers that are, around, that are around the corner. The purpose of those temporary lockers is that um, um, we don't bring the school bags into the lab, just the tools and yourselves um, and the protective equipment. Whatever paraphernalia you have, you put them on inside the locker that are just around the corner behind the wall, uh, simply because this room is um, quite busy. It's not just us in that room. Uh, there are there is a plumbing section, and there will be students there, and there is a welding section, and there will be students there. So sometimes uh, it's a full house, uh, and it's just like on the construction site. You are going to hear all kinds of other noises, and people walking around. Uh, so you know, might as well get used to the environment, uh, construction site or or industrial environment. Um, all right. So if everybody would bring the, their school bags uh, into that room, things would get messy and that actually would be a trip hazard. So you need your padlock to go into that locker, put your stuff in for the time of the class. And when the class is done, you go to that locker, take your stuff out and remove the padlock and keep it with you. So that's why we need a padlock. All right, All right. Uh, let's just uh, go over some other things here. Tools. Basic tools. Okay. I'm just going to, you know what, I'm just going to put that out of the way here. Uh, all these documents are already available for you to download uh, from our class portal, and we're just going to go over these here. Okay. Um, for the uh, for our class, of course, those tools are going to be included in, um, um, in in the kit. However, if you have these tools, you don't need to buy the kit. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to bring the tools that are from the school uh, from the from the bookstore. Uh, the bookstore is making uh, things much easier for us, so you don't have to go search high and low for that. But if you have those tools, by all means, bring them as long as they are intact and in a safe condition. All right. So, what do we need? We need a, a set of basic screwdrivers, and on that list, I have made little those green check marks here of out of the tools that are listed in this document, this is the absolute mass that we need in order to be comfortable with the class. So here's a couple of check marks, and here's three check marks here, and here's three, two check marks, and check mark, check mark, okay? Uh, all right, so let's talk about some screwdrivers here. For the most part, we distinguish one, two, three, four, five uh, basic screwdrivers. This is the oldest screwdriver in the world. And it is called either standard or slotted. Standard is um, because we call it standard. Are those, yeah, the ones that were the check marks? Yes, they are in your toolkit. Okay. It is, it's called standard because it was the oldest screwdriver in the world. Right? Or is also called slotted. Some people have tendency to call it flathead screwdriver. And if you say, uh, if you ask someone to hand you a flathead screwdriver, they will understand what uh, what it means. However, some people might say something to you. If you're a new on construction site, please do not correct people because you might get into you know you can get some funny looks. Just so you know, 
slotted screwdriver. Why do we call it slotted, not flathead? A flathead refers to a type of a screw head. Instead of a mushroom, it's a flat head. And once, you, once, that, once that screw goes into the surface, it's going to be flush with the surface. So that's a flat head screw. Screwdriver is not a flat head. Screwdriver is a slotted one, okay? A slotted screwdriver. Now, the next one after that is, and if you have any equipment that was uh, purchased and manufactured in the States, you are probably going to end up with something that's called a Star or Philips. Philips is a brand name. Where, okay, chat lines. Where do we get safety glasses? Safety glasses you can get pretty much in any hardware store or you can go to bookstore. Um, if you, <laughs> right now I've just passed by the bookstore and there's still lineups there. So, uh, uh, well, use your own discretion. <laughs> okay, where you want to buy them, okay? Uh, so Philips, um, and here is something that's called the Allen. Okay, these are brand names. Uh, Allen screwdriver. And uh, it's, oops, one, two, three, four, five. It's like a hexagon type of a shape, right? So that's called the Allen. Also, there, uh, there are, um, uh, instead of just like a screwdriver head, uh, they are those like a candy cane, like um, Allen. They called Allen keys. Um, you can buy them, and they can buy them in the metric uh, configuration, and you can buy them in the imperial configuration. All right here is another one that is Torx. Okay, that looks like a expanded kind of a cookie star um, instead of the Phillips one. And uh, some screws require that uh, kind of a screwdriver. As you go along, you're going to uh, uh, you're going to know uh, this stuff. Anyways, um, and then there is something that's called a square or Robertson. The most popular screwdrivers that you're going to use is going to be the Robertson in Canada, especially. And I love this configuration. Um, it works, in my opinion, works much better than the Phillips screwdriver. Uh, however, the most popular screwdrivers types are going to use is going to be the Robertson, it's going to be the Phillips, and the slotted. Sometimes you will run into the Allen or Torx. I remember I used to I used to work at a company some years ago uh, repairing cell phones in Burlington and those iPhones and Samsungs and all that they would have those miniature Torx screws. Let me tell you, I used to use microscope a lot for that. Okay, so Robertson, number one and number two. They're also color coded with red Robertson and green Robertson. We need those in order to function in our class. Then that's what the screw head looks like, and that's what the footprint of a screw looks like, and that's what the screwdrivers look like. Phillips, number one, number two, and number three. For the most part, you're going to use the number two. And these are the uh, screw uh, screw sizes that they will fit. Okay, so we need Phillips, number one, number two, number three. That's what Phillips looks like here. And that's what the screw looks like. And that's what the screwdriver, Phillips screwdrivers look like. And they have a tip. They have a shank and they handle this. Here's the anatomy of a screwdriver. There you go, you just learned something. And a slotted screwdriver, uh, for the most part, we're going to use two kinds, the 316 inch, and this uh, basically is the uh, width of the tip here. And quarter inch, you should be comfortable with these two. And that's what a slotted screw looks like. Aside from that, we will need wire cutters, which are included in the kit. You need a wire stripper, which is included in the kit. You will need tape measure, 
which is included in the kit. And I'm not sure if a permanent marker uh, or sometimes called magic marker uh, is included or not. But um, well, when you're working, you're going to get a bunch of pens, pencils and permanent markers. Um, and you will buy them by kilograms and you'll just keep them in your van because you will use them a lot. Right? Aside from the electrical tape. Um, the one thing that I haven't listed here is a level, but uh, we will get through that. Uh, I'm not sure if the level is um, included in the um, in the kit or not, but that's going to be for the second last lab uh, when we do the pipe bending. Um, actually, we'll, we will not need that this term. However, uh, it's a good idea to have it. And once you start, because sometimes you uh, are going to finish your lab um, earlier and you're just going to be standing there. So you can, you're going to be welcome to leave and do other stuff because you'll be busy with your school. Or if you wish to stay, uh, I'll give you a pipe bender and a piece of pipe and you can start practicing doing the conduit bending once you're done, all right? There's always some work you can do once you finish earlier. Uh, and here's the blah, blah, blah that you can read. Uh, we're, we have 20 minutes to go, so I don't, I'm not gonna go into you, this stuff you can read. These are example of the tools that is a semester, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so that's as far as tools. Let me see here, what else? Um, hard hat, let's look at, take a look at the hard hat. And over here, let me see if I can. There we go. Here is the hard hat, which is hot that is hard. The anatomy, for the most part, uh, the big thing that looks like a big dish or big ball, that's called a shell. And that the mesh inside that goes right on top of your head, uh, that provides nice cushioning, that's called cradle and then uh, harness it's part of the harness uh, the harness consists of the cradle and a headband and sometimes these this the front part of the headband is called sweat bands just like a bandana uh, so the sweat doesn't go into your eyes then here is the peak and this thing around the peak here is called a brim and sometimes it's just um, um, kind of a runoff brim and sometimes it's curved upwards um, which would help you if, if, if you're working outside in wet environment raining so the water doesn't go into your eyes it's just basically like a water spout some kind of thing here is the strap and sometimes you're going to have a chin strap and the ones that we are going to use they don't have a chin strap we don't need chin straps you know. so that's a basic structure for that and uh, how do we know that hard hat is intact so i'm going to sometimes i read what's on the screen and sometimes i don't depending on the situation and this time i'm going to read and explain uh over here so we're going to let's let's find out how to check the expiry date and i'm going to stop right here gonna put a little asterisk imaginary asterisk here and you will know why uh so find out how to check the expiry date on hard hats what stamps to look for where to look the difference between the manufacture date and expiry date as a concept so here and here these two kind of interconnect uh, how long a hard hat lasts when to replace your hard hat okay let's go here oh. come on oh yeah well, okay too much too far there we go Uh, all right, <clears throat> every hard hat has an expiry date, also known as the maximum lifespan. You might think that this would be marked on the hard hat, like, for example, I use buy or sell by or best before. The expiry date on the hard hat is not printed. But what you get instead is you get the manufacturer's date, the date the, the, the hard hat was made. You can't put a expiry date on hard hat because hard hat take a lot of beating. Okay? 
and sometimes you're going to just have to replace it quite often before the recommended lifespan of the of the hard hat here is a stamp that you look for where do you find it i'm going to go back a couple of screens here is the peak of the hard hat you look under that peak here but sort of like a dash you look under that and you're going to see that stamp this stamp it's a magnified view of the stamp all right uh, <clears throat> so we're going to find out when this hard hat was manufactured okay so here's a little arrow and here is kind of a dial with one to twelve well the year has 12 months so here's january february march april may and so on and here's december 12th month 12th month all right so between the arrow you also have another number and it's 13. so by looking at the stamp you know that this hard hat was made in 2013 Okay. And it was made in the fifth month of 2013, which means it was made in May of the year 2013. So now you know when the hard hat was made. Uh, one. There we go. Expiry period. Define the shelf life or maximum lifespan on the hard hat. This depends on the make and model of the hard hat. The standard lifespan used to be three years after the manufacture. Now many manufacturers give five year lifespan. Now notice the wording. It's all about wording. Okay. Uh, they mentioned something that's called it lifespan. It's not a five year guarantee. It's a lifespan of the hard hat, which means if it's five years, if, if the hard hat is designed to have a lifespan of five years, if you don't use the hard hat, if it just sits on the shelf after five years, it's not good, right? Just have to replace it, right? But don't count that you're going to have the hard hat uh, intact for that long, right? So, the safe thing to, to, to be is just three years if you want to be really on the safe side. Because once you buy your hard hat, sometimes you don't remember where you bought it. You're going to make a phone call. Who are you going to call? What's the number to the hard hat people? Uh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so if you know, if you go in some specialty store, and you talk to whatever the salesperson is and they are familiar with the manufacturer that they get it from and they have it in writing yes okay you can tell you this this hard hat has a five year lifespan or it has a three year lifespan um well so here's in our example uh this thing was made in may 2013 and if it had a five year lifespan the hard hat would expire in may 2018 okay now, it's, as I said, don't expect your hard hat to last that long. Those things are being used. Right? Also, the suspension, which is the harness that is in the uh, inside part of the hard hat, it should be not older than 12 months. Okay, let me go to the next slide here. I've got 15 minutes to, oh, come on. Okay, regardless of the designated lifespan, check. Well, is that uh, okay? That's the next slide. Yes. Check for dents and punctures. <clears throat> Anything can. If this thing is supposed to protect you from falling objects or something that can really hit you hard, um, so if the structure of it is compromised, of course the hard hat is going to be the whole hard hat is compromised just like a car it has four wheels if you get a flat tire that's on one wheel the whole car is not drivable right <laughs> yeah. uh, so cracks dents and punctures check for that so regardless of the designated lifespan inspect for 
before you put that on every time, before you put the hard hat on your head every time, just give it a quick visual check. Fading, chalkiness, or discoloration, that tells you, chalkiness is that sometimes, um, if you have like old lawn chairs that they're sitting outside all the time uh, and you touch that lawn chair and some of that uh, lawn chair stays on your fingers, that's chalkiness, okay? So the structure is really compromised. Um, well, it's not protecting you as it should. So that's chalkiness. Fading, if the color is faded, uh, that also tells you that the structure of this thing is compromised and discoloration, fading and discoloration is pretty much the same thing uh, loss of flexibility or it's if it's flexing too much and you can tell that the structure is compromised and if anything is torn broken or otherwise damaged webbing components that's the kind of a hard uh, hard hard mesh that um, comes in direct contact with your head all right, uh, care and use, inspect the hard hat each time you intend to wear it and uh, throughout the day. Clean with approved cleaner. For example, uh, our Confidence Plus cleaning solution or a mild non-detergent soap. Non-detergent soap with warm water. Uh, it should be okay to clean it no harsh chemicals of abrasives should be used simply because you don't know what this chemical is doing to the well plastic so to speak that uh, the hard hat is made of oil <coughs> excuse me oil based solvents will deteriorate the shell so don't use gasoline or similar products to remove tar grease or any sticky contaminants Uh, do not use scrapers, knives, or other abrasive tools to remove the debris on the hard hat. Mm -hmm. Cleaning the headband and webbing in the mild soap and water solution will help to eliminate the buildup of oil and contaminates, which is basically gives you the comfort of, of, of wear. And uh, you know, well, it's going to make that, uh, that uh, harness last uh, longer intact. Okay, um, decoration, prints. Some paints will attack and damage the materials. So try not to paint your hard hat uh, or put any uh, you know, marks on it with, uh, because you don't know what the chemical structure of whatever it is that you're putting on. This reduces the degree of protection the hard hat provides. Some manufacturers provide imprinting at the time of purchase. So, Use that uh, if you really, really feel like decorating your, your hard hat, okay? Uh, they have the proper inks that won't damage the integrity of the shell and will be resistant to cracking and fading. Stickers and decals. Uh, decal is a type of a sticker. Uh, some decals might be used as long as they are not metallic and adhesives aren't damaging the shell. So general rule is try not to use stickers on your hard hat because you don't know what the chemical composition of the glue is and that actually can damage or compromise the structure of the shell. So here it is, I said it. Here's a classification, class G, just a general kind of a class must withstand well 2200 volts for one minute class e which is what we need must withstand 12,000 volts for three minutes and so don't be alarmed we're not going to have 12 we're not going to be playing with those voltages <laughs> anywhere near that but uh, we still require that hard hat because we are the electrical students uh, and class C hard hats are not tested for electrical um, insulation. Okay? So that's what these letters mean. Okay? And uh, you can see them under the dash uh, or, or somewhere on the inside of the shell. And if not, ask the salesperson who is selling you that. All right, types, type one. 
come on, it just went. Type one hard hats are only designed to protect workers from objects and blows that come from above and strike the top of the helmet. Type two hard hats, that's what we need. We don't need anything else. Type two hard hats are designed to protect protect <laughs> All right. somebody ate a t here it was me protect workers from uh ladder so from uh, uh lateral blows including from the front back and sides from the top type two hard hats are also tested for off center penetration resistance and chin strap retention so type two heavier environment okay just a regular environment, construction or industrial uh, for the most part. But in an in industrial environment, there are some lifts that involve chains and whatnot. And those chains sometimes swing out, they fall out and they swing. Uh, they can hit you from the, So it depends on what the company that hires you requires. Okay? Reversible hard hats. Some people want to look. Uh, some people want to look really cool by putting the hard hat backwards. The hard hat is not for decoration, okay? Um, the hard hat is to protect. If you really want to reverse that, because sometimes you need to reverse the hard hat uh, because you need, like for example, welders, uh, sometimes they need to reverse it because they want to get closer to, you know, to, to seeing things that they need to see you need to look for this kind of stamp somewhere on the inside of the shell uh, if you see that then the hard hat is reversible you can put it on backwards and it's still uh, you're still wearing it correctly and it's supposed to protect you as intended now there's no guarantees of protecting you you, you, you can just go careless just because just because you have a hard hat how many times did I see that? Some, uh, I used to live in GTA for about a year. And let me tell you, in the morning, uh, some people think that they just because they got snow tires and some sort of um, features in the car, they can just drive the winter just like in the summer. And then you can see um, why Don Valley Parkway, sometimes it's called Don Valley Parking Lot. Uh, all right. Uh, these are the standards. Uh, well, you might want to look for this kind of a sticker or a stamp. Uh, it's got to be CSA, but ANSI is also this CSA ANSI. They are uh, interchangeable standards for the most part in, by Canada and the States. Type 2 class hard hat, type uh, class E. It says type 2. We need just type 1. It's fine for us and has to be class E. We don't need type 2. Type 1 is fine. Okay, so that's pretty much as far as the hard hat so we covered the hard hat we covered the tools uh the last thing i'm going to go over and i just we don't have time because we're just about to finish the last one i just want you to read that it will be on a quiz and it will be on a test the i just found i just put together a little presentation that says five most common reasons for accident go over that and uh if you don't understand it's pretty much self-explanatory if you don't understand something please let me know by all means okay we have four minutes to go um are there any questions about anything that we have talked about or anything about this course don't ask me why life is so hard so you can chat or uh, you can shoot me by uh, shoot the question by the chat or you can just pipe in and talk on voice. Uh, if not, we're going to finish the class. So anybody questions? Yes, no, maybe. Cool. All right. So this concludes our first lesson. And if you're still not sure about something, by all means, please send me an email. Okay. It's been wonderful. I wish you a nice and pleasant 2022 term and we certainly look forward to working with you all of us and all of you thank you have a good one guys